Hello, I'm Superintendent Jerry Hill. I'm here today with Alicia Fly, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. We're joined today by Oakland Early College Head of School, Jennifer Newman, and Lisa Madalena, who teaches Chemistry and 13th Seminar at Oakland Early College. Hello, Dr. Hill. Just wanted to share with you that Oakland Early College is a part of the West Bloomfield School District and it's located on Oakland Community College Orchard Ridge Campus and it serves students throughout Oakland County. Jennifer, students at OEC engage in exciting college preparatory curriculum taught by West Bloomfield teachers. Can you tell us a bit about your staff? Absolutely. We have six high school teachers and our teachers teach their classes on the OCC campus. So we use rooms during the day and in the evening those classrooms flip back to college professors. Our six amazing teachers also work with one high school counselor, myself as head of school, and we have one secretary. But if you ask our students time and time again, they will tell you that their favorite part of the OEC experience is absolutely 100% the teachers. Ms. Madalena, can you share with us what a typical day is like at Oakland Early College? Certainly. Our younger students have more of a traditional um, day. They will have uh, their schedule contain generally six classes and they would most likely have one, high, or one college course sometime during the week. As the students age up, our students take fewer high school courses and more college coursework. By the time they're in 13th grade, they'll be taking most likely just 13th seminar with me and a full load of college courses, 12 credits and up. Our, our lunch schedule um, in the middle of the day allows us to transition from a one hour schedule for each class to a block schedule in the afternoon, which we've determined has allowed our students to take more of the college coursework in the afternoon instead of all late in the evening. How many college pathways are available to the students? Students at OEC are OCC students, so they have a student number, they take the compass placement test, so they're, they're opportunity exists just like any other OCC student. They can travel down any of the OCC associate degree pathways. They also are eligible for any of the certificates that OCC offers. So this year we will have graduates in liberal arts associate, science, applied science, business. We'll also have a student who's getting her associate degree. She's also getting her paralegal certificate. We've had students that have graduated with firefighting certificates. So anything that you can think of that OCC offers, our students have that opportunity as well. What's the range of class sizes in terms of the courses that students take as a part of the OEC program? Fortunately for us, our class sizes seem to model more private school. So we're definitely less than 30 in a classroom. Our largest class size this year is 29. And part of that is the structure of the school. So the classrooms themselves don't lend to a large class size. Our labs in chemistry, for example, 24 would be the max. So our class sizes do feel smaller than a lot of traditional schools. Oakland Early College, my understanding, was the first uh, early college experience in, in the county. Um, so you're a model for other schools. Can you uh, confirm that? Yes. It's very exciting to be a model for other schools. Um, now there are about 60 early college or other enhanced dual enrollment programs in the state. The first early or middle college in the state was Mott that's located in Flint, Michigan. And since then, there have been some that have slowly popped up, but the trajectory is pretty great right now. So we were the first in Oakland County. We have people that come visit us all the time to see how we're doing school. But early colleges look very different from each other. But what connects them all is that they all do school in a non-traditional setting, but they also all provide college opportunities for students. If I understand correctly, OEC students graduate with a high school diploma as well as an opportunity to earn an associate's degree. In addition to that, what other qualities um, do students leave OEC with? We are very excited because one of the things that we think we do really well is teach students how to do college. Now we are a school unto ourselves, we have an entity code, we're our own school, we have our own graduation, and college is part of who we are as a school. We also have very strong core beliefs in ideas of service, in ideas of diversity, and so when you sit in a family meeting with me for an hour, the three things that we'll focus on are the, these three characteristics of an amazing global citizen, and we believe being highly educated, the college piece, the idea of culture, good global citizens respect and want to learn about other cultures, and then the idea of community. We want our students to give. So our legacy as a school is to turn out these amazing students, leash, unleash them in the world, <laughs> and that they will do better for the world, not just be competitive in the world, but also advance the world. 
I understand that Lisa is the brainchild behind uh, community time. Would you mind explaining what community time is? Certainly. Um, we have, in, in our seven years of existence, not had one year that everything has been the same. So I sometimes, as a science teacher, consider us to be an experimental lab school where we get to try and change. Mm -hmm. Um, we are constantly surveying our students uh, to find out what has worked the previous year and what they're missing in the next year. And so this year we have implemented um, a, a three Friday rotation. So on every third Friday we have what we call an all school community time where our 13th grade students are our team leaders. They will lead a quad of students around um, throughout the school year to each of the different teachers where each teacher will then host a, a special in, in a sense. So we have what we've determined our, our teachers um, select items that they feel are essential for students to be good citizens. Um, right now we have one teacher that focuses on literally understanding how to maintain your car and those supplements in that piece. Um, my strand always is a focus on that community service. So we have actually been um, working on team building within that segment, but we also um, conduct an activity where we uh, raise funds and adopt an animal at the zoo afterwards within a two hour time span. So th there are a lot of neat things that happen in community time. The biggest drive for that was our 13th grade students as they transition do not feel as connected to the school because they are taking primarily college courses and then a 13th seminar with all just 13th graders. So we use this as an initiative to keep those students connected to the rest of the school so that they will continue to build and be role models for the younger students so that they can meet them, interact with them, guide them, give them advice. Um, talk to them about classes to take and to not take and the paths that they're on and see how they're transitioning into the college world. And it allows for leadership opportunity for them. So as they are going out when completing their college applications, they'll be more competitive when it comes to what leadership opportunities have you had, how it, you know, give us examples, um, and mentoring along the way. I even get to host a community time. Mm -hmm. Mine is on Carol Dweck's work and mindset. Mm -hmm. So I even get to engage with the students. It's really quite exciting. I've been to a couple of community times, and my, my takeaway is it's a, they do come together, the students come together as a community, and, and they seem to really enjoy it, and I think you do an excellent job with that aspect. What other extracurricular activities are available to students? Well, we actually have quite a few of our own. So we have a student government that is run by one of our teachers. We also initiated the first early college National Honor Society. Um, we have a teacher that leads academic games. Students outside of that are able to participate in theater events through the college campus. Um, in addition, they are also all encouraged and welcome to participate in the extracurricular sporting events through West Bloomfield School. So they can come up to the high school and participate in any of the sports through 12th grade. So you, one, one really gets a feeling that OEC students have, have a sense of pride and community uh, when you visit and hearing you speak. Um, Lisa, do students have access to all of the OCC activities available to OCC students? Absolutely. Um, they have access to the Academic Support Center. They have access to the math lab, the writing labs. Um, they can participate through the student enrichment programs. It is actually our students, our student population, that strongly supports and encourages the college to actually create some of the events. There, just this week, there was um, a Black History Month event at the library, and our English classes often go over for the poetry readings that occur. If they have, um, they've, they've had Latin jazz music in the theater, and we are invited for those specials, and it's usually our population that supports those events. Um, so we are actually a very integral part of their community as well as our own. Um, so we have definitely bridged the gap between the high school students and the college um, setting. And you've mentioned several times 13th year. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us exactly what happens in the 13th year? Sure. The concept of an early college is that the students are um, retained in high school for an additional year with the idea that they are going to dual enroll in coursework from the time that they are in 10th grade through the 13th grade year. So they blend their college with um, the high school and they ease into it. So by the 13th grade, they are primarily a first year college student because they will be taking a full load of uh, classes, but they will have one high school course. And we have developed that course to be their, their support system for tr that transition into a four year college or university setting or into, the work or into the workforce if they choose not to continue with their education at that point. So the 13th grade year is really meant to be um, 
a support system for them. So we start in the fall with college visits. We have um, college presentations. We work on their college essays. We develop their professional portfolios. We had an exciting event this just the end of our first semester in that I recruited seven faculty members, including deans, counselors, professors, to conduct mock professional interviews for all of our students. So they had to show up with their professional portfolios, dressed to the nines, and they each conduct, so they conducted interviews for us. I thought it gave them a more professional setting and not as, as comfortable as they would have been if they interviewed with us. Um, so the, the um, faculty at the college were thrilled to participate because they believe our students are some of the top on the campus. Um, we will transition into the second semester moving toward um, you know, looking at how to, how to apply for financial aid and looking for scholarships and also work primarily on our capstone project, which is a 15 minute present exit presentation that each student will perform in the spring. So Jennifer, what are some of the college or career paths that students pursue uh, once they com have completed the early college program? Most of our students will take the college credits that they've earned and transfer them to the university of their choice. Some of our students will stay on at OCC and finish their associate degree. Some of our students are able to earn an associate degree and or a certificate and they choose to work before they go on and pursue further education. But our students are doing basically anything you can think of and we have students in every school that you can think of. So we have students on full ride at University of Michigan Ann Arbor. One of our most prestigious schools that we have a student attending is the Webb Institute of Design in New York, which is a school where they only accept a very small, like 28 students a year. And if you're accepted, it's a full ride, but it's all studying naval architecture. We have students that go on, we have a lot of students that are very much into performance. And so we have a lot of students that will go on to careers, either maybe in a career like this, or we'll have students that go on to careers in science. We have students that basically do anything you can possibly think of from our school. But one of the great things about attending an early college is you get to take coursework at the college level in what you think you're interested in. So you find out rather quickly if you've been kind of daydreaming about the wrong career so that you can switch gears before you're actually paying the big bucks to go to school. So what percentage of your graduates continue their education after OEC? 96. 96 percent. Mm -hmm. Great. We'll be back with more from the campus of Oakland Early College. Welcome back. We're here with Jennifer Newman, head of school at Oakland Early College, and OEC teacher Lisa Maddalena. Ms. Maddalena, um, some of the students um, at OEC are not only members of the National Honor Society, but also members of Phi Theta Kappa. Can you tell us a little bit about those experiences and organization opportunities for students? Sure. We started the National Honor Society, and one of our uh, main drives was to provide service to our own students. So we have established a couple of um, unique service projects. One is our own peer tutoring um, program that we actually, you can sign up for online to schedule appointments with our, with our tutors. Um, in addition to that, uh, we this year started an FYI program, um, first year integration program, where our National Honor Society members will meet up for lunch um, about once every three weeks with the first year students to help them integrate into the school and the setting of the, of the college campus. In addition to that, our students are able, um, once they have attained enough credits, to join the, the Phi Theta Kappa, the National Honor Society at the community college. And several of our students over the past few years have actually taken on leadership positions and become vice presidents of, of service through the Phi Theta Kappa. So our students do have an opportunity to um, interact and, and be recognized for their academic achievement. But we also have this core of giving back. So we are giving and not just taking from everything that happens. And so we are really trying to support the students because not all of our students are going to be able to join a National Honor Society. So we're trying to use what we can. Um, the motto for National Honor Society is actually noblesse oblige, which means those of nobility or those with skill give back. And that is what we are trying to constantly do. 
Um, so that's you know something that we're very proud of at our school. You have been designated as the Michigan State Reward School. Um, tell us about, about that and what does that say about Oakland Early College? We are thrilled that the state of Michigan has granted us the label Reward School. And so what that means basically is the state recognizes all the amazing things that our students and our staff are doing on a daily basis. We receive the recognition primarily because our trajectory for our test scores is faster at a higher pace of increase than schools in the state. So we sit at a 94th percentile this year in the state and we're very proud that the state recognized us as a reward school. Now it's very impressive because it certainly um, speaks to being you know, in the top 5% in terms of student achievement performance um, throughout the state of Michigan, which again is very impressive. Um, can you share with us, because certainly in order to accomplish that, it speaks to the level of excellence in terms of teaching and learning um, at OEC. Can you talk about some of the characteristics that we would see in terms of teaching and learning um, at OEC that may be different, or how do they compare to a traditional um, school setting? Sure. I, I think the biggest thing as a teacher is that you have to understand that we would need flexibility is key, that you have to be able to accommodate. We don't run on a bell schedule. We don't actually have bells. So everyone has to be able to get into sync of floating from one class to the next. Um, so you're constantly watching that, but also recognizing that you have to be accommodating. Um, we have to differentiate as much as possible in the classroom because each student, we have a wide spe spectrum of student ability in our classroom. We don't have the luxury of having AP honors and regular coursework. Everyone is in the same class. So you definitely have to accommodate each student um, and make sure that you're working as a team, giving them the experiences, providing that support. So as a teacher, flexibility is key because we have to change on the fly. In addition to that, we also have what is called, one of our core pieces of our program is actually called Focus Class. And it has been, part of our institution since day one. And every student in every year will be in a focus class. Um, and we have modified it over time, but we also have in the past two years gone to, what we, to grade level focus. Originally we had the focus classes mixing all of the students together, but what we found is that the students had specific needs by grade level. So when we look at our, our test scores, part of the reason that we are looking at that reward position is because we went to grade level focus and we knew that those students that were in our 12th grade were going to be testing that year and we're helping give them the, the, the tools that they need to be able to be successful with that situation. Whereas our 10th grade students coming in, they, meet, they need study skills. A 13th grader is probably not going to need to know how to take Cornell notes because they've done it for three years. But a 10th grader needs that piece. The 11th graders need to learn how to incorporate service and learn to give back and, and be great student leaders. And by 13th grade, they need that transition off to college and they need support doing it. Yeah. So we have definitely taken the feedback that the students give us and, and really it's the core of the staff that we have is we are doing what we would want for our children. Speaking of wanting for your children, I know that um, I, I anticipate that there is a lot of communication with parents. What kind of response or feedback that you are you getting from parents regarding the Oakland um, Early College experience? I think one of the things that that the parents um, feel is that they're relieved in a sense that we take on some of that responsibility, especially with that 13th grade, because I'll have parents at the beginning of the year start emailing and asking questions like. We're, we're getting nervous about the college piece and I'm like we have colleges coming in we will help with the essays we're working on a, on a portfolio and by the time the parents um, come as as guests to those capstone projects they are extremely proud of the progress their students have made but they're also very pleased with what they've gotten um, by trusting us with their students and not to mention they're very pleased with the fact that they have free college tuition for their students so how do you feel about President Obama's recent uh, communication and, and really policy that he's promoting of having community college be available to everybody? I think that every student should have the opportunity to go to college. I think one of the great things about an early college 
is the fact that we embed teaching students how to do college, so we help them learn the skill sets necessary to be successful once they get to college. So students that are successful with us are students that can persevere, students that are independent. We only want nice students, by the way. But we have students that hone these skills because those are the skills that you need when you go to college. So having to interact with college counselors, having to figure out when your name is not on a class roster, what do you do? If you don't like the way a professor grades something, if you're not sure about anything, we're always here to help guide them, but we always help them solve their own problems at the college, which is that perseverance skill set that so many students are missing when they go to college. So I think the idea of free college is impressive, amazing, wonderful, but I also think having those supports in place is one of the things that we do very well so that they're successful while they're there for those two years. So is, is your program free to the students there? Yes, it is. <laughs> we pay for tuition and we pay for textbooks. The only things we can't pay for are considered consumables. So that would be things like um, art kits, art supplies, things like that. If a student takes a scuba diving course, they have to rent the gear from the instructor. We cannot purchase the scuba gear. But pretty much everything that you could possibly want to take is free to you. And you have certainly articulated um, how students um, can thrive in this environment and meet not only their high school requirements, but they can also lead at a collegiate level. What kind of feedback do you get from students? What are students saying about their experience at OEC? You know, I. I think that you know some of the most meaningful is students have said that the school has saved their lives. Um, there are parents who have at, at the capstone presentations will come back and say this completely changed my child. It is I'm going to be the first to say it is not for everyone because you have to be able to number one get to school and back every day. So transportation is not provided. So that is a huge hurdle for some of our for some of our students. So you have to be persistent and determined enough to get to school every day. Um, you also have to be independent enough to be on this campus and follow a schedule without a bell ringing or without somebody monitoring you to make it across campus. So you do have to be independent. You do have to be able to be trusted. You, um, you know, the, the parents are, are very pleased when, when the students exit, but we're also just as pleased because we're so proud of this, the, the progress the students have made. Not everyone is going to transition into four-year university, but everyone has the toolbox that they are ready to take more classes or move on to a job whenever they want to. Um, and going back to it, really our goal is to provide them with the skills to be able to be successful, to be resilient, to be determined, to give back, to understand that this is a gift to them when they have this free tuition and that as a result, they owe their community back. So we do that through internships and through volunteering and hopefully they'll carry that on throughout their life. Fifth year student Simrit Jita talked to us about his life at OEC. Let's take a closer look. This is a very small, connected school. Everyone knows each other like family. I was a student ambassador for two semesters. Um, that I was awarded a scholarship for that. I. Uh, founded the NHS chapter over here and created a tutoring program and uh, been an, a supplemental instructor and individual tutor for the past year and a half. I plan to study finance either at University of Pennsylvania, Vanderbilt, uh, University of Michigan, or Michigan State. Uh, my parents think that this is a pretty good program for me because of the fit and I've also been able to explore, not because I've been trying to get my college application ready, but because I'm truly interested in what I'm doing. I feel much more strongly about the school now. I'd be willing to recommend it to anyone before. I mean, I, didn't, I really didn't even know much about the school until I came to it. Um, but. I've really been able to come out of my shell here. I have developed into a strong leader, and I've been able to take advantage of a lot of opportunities at this school, um, both at the college and at the high school. It appears that OEC was a perfect fit for Simrit and many other students who are finding success at Oakland Early College. Thank you for joining us today, where we have taken a closer look at Oakland Early College and how our teachers are connecting students to the real world. <laughs>